Hello, everybody, and welcome to our Gen Z Marketing Strategies presentation. My name is Melissa. I'm the director of the Small Business Development Center at UW Stevens Point. Just really quick, if you're not familiar with the SBDC, we provide no cost consulting to new and existing businesses. Uh, we just celebrated 40 years last year as a national organization. So no matter where you're watching this from, you can find your local SBDC by going to America's SBDC website and you can locate your local center from there. So today, what we want to talk about is learning how to connect with this highly digital generation that likes it when companies keep it real and show their true colors. Review the social media platforms they use. We're going to be focusing today on Snapchat, TikTok, and Instagram, and the techniques for you to execute your marketing strategies to this upcoming generation. So first and foremost, who are Gen Z, right? When we look up generations online, it can be a little bit confusing. What I have found um, as a general consensus is they are born between 1997 and 2019. Um, Gen Z is a fairly large generation. In 2019, they accounted for 40% of the global consumers. So if Gen Z is not currently parked of your marketing strategy, a lot of cases they will be soon. So Gen Z should really be starting to creep into your marketing uh, campaigns, you know, unless they're really not part of your target market. Um, but that's a little bit of a different conversation of identifying that. But you know, if you're selling a product or service that might appeal to Gen Z, um, this presentation is going to help you through a couple techniques to really think about how they're using the social media and how they have their purchasing power. When we think about purchasing, they buy experiences, not products or services, right? So they want to feel involved with the companies that they're purchasing from. They want to have a good relationship with the companies that um, they're purchasing from, right? And they they appreciate when companies appreciate that, or they appreciate when companies treat them well, and they'll reciprocate by purchasing products or services from them. So it's much more than just the product or service. There's a whole experience, relationship uh, component that we're going to talk about uh, through several examples today. They support companies that support their personal beliefs and missions. This is a huge difference from the older generations, right? A lot of times the older generations don't necessarily want to know or care about the personal beliefs of the of the companies that they're working from for, you know, or they're purchasing from, you know, they don't really they're not going to take that into consideration like Gen Z will. So really thinking about the social issues and things that come to the forefront for Gen Z is a little bit different of a marketing strategy than we've seen for previous generations. They value self-expression and are willing to pay a premium for brands that highlight their individuality. This is specifically unique to Gen Z compared to millennials. Um, so millennials are not super brand specific. So it's really interesting to see this shift for this generation. And you're going to see a lot of examples today that are going to show you a lot of those differences. They also tend to be very educated about the brands and the realities behind them. So they are paying attention. <laughs> you know, they're doing their research. They're Googling more about your company. They're not just looking at your website. They're not just looking at your Etsy store, right? They're looking so much deeper than generations have before. And they're going to dig until they find the information that they're looking for. So being out there with the information about, you know, how you came to be and why you're passionate about what you do or sell, um, they care about those kind of things. And you're going to see that sprinkled throughout the presentation today of why that is so important to them. They are the most racially and ethnically diverse generation ever with a spending power of over $140 billion. Um, the racially and ethnically diverse really shows up in a lot of campaigns nowadays. So you'll see, you know, a lot more uh, interracial couples. You'll see a lot more leads of TV shows from, you know, people that aren't white um, and really paying attention to ads that businesses are putting out and seeing those racial and ethnic differences um, and even simple things like having more women in commercials, right? We're thinking about this generation is very progressive. So they want to see themselves. They want to see themselves in your marketing. And that's really, really important to think about. And businesses have lost business because of that. I like to use the example of uh, Victoria's Secret lately has gotten into a little bit of trouble because they were behind on this, right? They're looking at they're not being super inclusive and people kind of 
shifted away from them and started shopping from people like Aerie, who we'll talk about later on Instagram. Um, they have really great inclusive campaigns that we just haven't seen from brands before, but are so important to this generation. Um, so definitely keep it in mind when you're doing your advertisements for your business, that that racial and ethnic difference really is more noticeable and people will notice if it's not there as well. Their modest spending habits and cravings for authenticity has turned traditional marketing upside down, right? They just, they don't do what other, other organizations have. So, uh, or what other generations have. So really thinking about those, um, the authenticity, you know, they're not going to fall for a, you think about infomercials, you know, I don't think there's a lot of Gen Zers falling for infomercials. They want to know a lot more real uh, content from the company. They want to see, you know, people just like them using the products or services. They're not so sold on traditional radio or TV um, uh, that we think about when we think about traditional marketing. And I do want to highlight, and you'll hear me say this several times throughout the presentation, uh, they are not millennials. So I myself am a millennial. I fall in the millennial generation. So when I was doing this uh, research for this presentation, it was really interesting to come across all these things that really were different and continue to be different than what I have experienced as a millennial or, or what I, um, what I, you know, how, how I purchase. It's just a lot different. So changing tech, interactive tech is a focus. They were born into the internet age. They literally don't know the world without internet. When you think about 1997, um, the internet had actually been around for a while but at that point. So um, I always like to say, like, I remember the days with dial-up internet when I was a kid and, um, you know, really slow loading times and that awful noise that your computer would make. Uh, I remember that. This generation doesn't. You know, my daughter is four and a half and she knows that I can go onto YouTube and I can search Paw Patrol toy video and find what she's looking for, right? Or I, I can look for a specific uh, episode of a show that she wants to watch. That's just how this generation is growing up. It's very on demand. It's very tech focused. Um, they spend a lot of time using the internet as well, which you'll see throughout the presentation too. Uh, that's a lot different than generations before because we just didn't have the technology until uh, recently. When we're thinking about technology, we think about augmented reality, artificial intelligence, cloud-based tech apps on demand, right? All the ways that we're using internet that we've never used internet before. There's some really great augmented reality campaigns we're gonna touch on later for some of the platforms um, that really, it's a great way to use this tech that this generation is so used to using. You know, and on the most basic level, we're talking filters on Snapchat or Instagram, right? You know, for people that don't have some of these other apps, you know, filters is at the very base of it. Filters are a way to think about technology. That's augmented reality. Their lives are driven and depend on tech. Uh, you'll see later down on the slide, many claim they couldn't live without YouTube. That's a serious stat. That's a serious statement, right? I mean, when we think about a social network becoming so ingrained in somebody that they say they can't live without it, we definitely should pay attention to it. Now in this presentation, I won't actually touch on YouTube because I figured that's probably the one that we're the most comfortable with, um, but definitely something to keep in mind for your video uh, and putting everything on YouTube as well as the other social networks. 45% of Gen Z will receive a mobile service plan between the ages of 10 and 12. This is crazy. I mean, I, I feel like that's really young. You know, I, I didn't get my first cell phone until I was thinking, 13 and I was only allowed to call home from band practice, right? So a um, lot different for Gen Z. Instagram is working on an Instagram platform for children under the age of 13, which I don't technically, I don't necessarily agree with that. Um, but, you know, there are things in the work because this is such a, a strongly connected tech generation. Uh, when we think about marketing, prioritizing and video audio content is going to be key. On average, this generation is consuming three and a half hours of internet video a day and 53% of all audio is streamed. And I would say this stat kind of tumbles into millennials as well. You know, I, I've had Sirius XM in my car since 2014. Um, I can't remember the last time I listened to the radio. So you're trying to use radio ads for your products, you're probably missing not only Gen Z, but also a lot of millennials as well. Do a lot of podcasts, 
um, you know, looking at recorded audio, there's apps that also have audio in them, in addition to the regular apps that we think about, and then internet video, you know, thinking, how much are they using YouTube, like they're looking on YouTube for full, full TV shows, they're looking on YouTube to do most of the things they want to Google, right? A lot of times they end up on YouTube for how-to videos and those kind of things. But um, a lot of the apps that we're going to focus on today also have a significant amount of video, which obviously plays into that stat as well. They're going to scroll past ads click quickly. So um, retargeting keeps you top of mind. And retargeting, for those of you that aren't familiar, is basically, you know, using the cookies of people visiting your website and then sprinkling ads throughout the other websites that they visit. Um, not going to touch on retargeting today, but important to keep in mind. And also really noting about scrolling past the ads quickly. It says later in this presentation, you know, their attention span is about eight seconds. If you don't get, capture them in that first eight seconds, they're going to keep scrolling. Um, so really, really important to think about engaging content as we go through the presentation today. I did want to add one slide that's really thinking about, you know, how people are interacting with your company outside of social media. So this is how tech has kind of trickled its way into general uh, relationships with, with these consumers, right? So think about set it and forget it. So subscription services such as Stitch Fix or HelloFresh or any of those other things that, you know, you get monthly or weekly boxes. Uh, in the mail is a set it and forget it. They love it. You know, there's a lot of makeup ones, food ones, um, clothing. There's a lot of different opportunities out there. There are some really cool local businesses around here. I've seen new subscription services as well. So can be put into a lot of businesses if you really just sit and think about how to incorporate it. Um, but subscriptions are one that businesses can certainly entertain. Kiosk ordering is another one. You know, you go into McDonald's, a lot of McDonald's now have these kiosks where you don't have to talk to a person uh, you're, or you punch in your own order. So, you know, you're not, you're the one messing it up if it gets messed up typically. So kiosk ordering is really great. And even some small businesses are using this through things like Toast, um, you know, using a, an iPad to place their order. You can do this as a small business, most definitely. On-demand pricing. So even for complicated businesses, a lot of Gen Zers are expecting to be able to go to a website, use some sort of quoting tool and get a price. Um, so that's a lot different than other generations. You know, millennials even don't like that as much, but they're not necessarily looking for that on-demand pricing. They're willing to make some contacts. They just won't make as many as previous generations. Gen Zers in general want to just go to a website and find a price. You know, they don't want to have to talk to a person. Online, live interactions, chat, video calls, those kind of interactions um, for small businesses can sometimes be a little bit challenging. Like we think about chat, a lot of businesses do have their Facebook chat activated. So people can use that, you know, an online chat bot that pops up when you're on your website that is a little bit more capital intensive. intensive. So not a lot of businesses have that, but Really, there are options out there. And video calls is kind of the norm, right? Like in the last year, we've gotten a lot more used to doing video calls and businesses are using video calls a lot more often. Um, I, I give the example here. I did TurboTax live for my taxes this year. Basically, you're going through TurboTax and if you have any questions, you press a button and it connects you with a TurboTax representative that can answer your questions. It was really cool. <laughs> you know, it was a really neat opportunity um, as a consumer to use that and have that on demand assistance was really, really great. So, some things to think about outside of social media, although we're thinking mostly about social media in this presentation today, um, but just some other things that businesses can implement that Gen Z will like uh, when they're dealing with their business. So what platforms are they on, right? That's the major question. Like, where should you spend your time to find this generation? You notice the first two boxes, the 13 to 18 and the 19 to 25 would fall into the Gen Z category. 26 to 37 is millennials. Um, so, you know, you get a little bit of both on this chart, but some really interesting trends to pay attention to. Instagram, number one for those Gen Zers. They love themselves some Instagram. And you'll see that later when we dive into that platform. Same with Snapchat. You'll see TikTok ranks high on both of those lists as well. And YouTube is on there. Again, I'm not going to touch that today. Facebook is on the older Gen Zers. And you'll obviously see it's number one for those millennials. Um, a lot of the younger Gen Zers don't want to be on Facebook. That's where their grandma and their mom are. So they don't necessarily want to be on that platform. 
not going to dive into it to, to it today, but if Gen Zers are really your main focus for your target market, um, maybe Facebook isn't the best platform to be on. And you can see that in these stats, right? I was hoping to find a more recent chart. You'll see this one is dated April, 2020. Things really did change with the pandemic. I know for a fact that TikTok is a lot higher on all of these lists. Um, maybe not the middle one there. Instagram probably still runs out for that middle that middle age group, but TikTok has really, really grown over the last year with the pandemic. It was just a really nice platform uh, to, to escape it, escape it all, right? And we'll talk about some examples as we go along. So really just paying attention to this chart of why we focus on Instagram, TikTok, and Snapchat today is because that's where they are, right? That's really where they are. And we wanna maximize that, uh, that contact. So Snapchat deep dive, we're going to start with Snapchat. I did gather this information from a Snapchat report. Uh, if you Google it, you can probably find the whole report. This is about Snapchatters. So they did not separate Gen Z to millennials. Um, but, you know, when we're thinking about Snapchat, it's, it's both those generations a lot because they do use the platform, uh, you know, but Gen Zers are using it in a little bit of a different way. And you'll see that in some of the examples. So Snapchatters in general, 4.4 trillion in spending power. That is a significant money, um, a significant amount of money, right? When we're thinking about it. So really don't ignore Snapchat. I think out of the three that I'm talking about today, Snapchat is probably the most difficult to implement as a small business. I'm not saying it's impossible, but I really wanted to focus on how the generation is using the platform. So if you do get on these, you know, keeping those things in mind when you're creating content, uh, will help you be successful if you do choose Snapchat as one of your social medias. So one and two say they like to hear the backstory of the companies they purchased from, um, which is kind of a shift, right? We haven't traditionally seen that they've wanted that information before, but they do want you to do a deep dive. They want to know who you are. They want to know where you're from. They want to know why you're passionate about what you do or what you sell. Um, so that backstory is really important to share and that raw content that this generation is looking for. That's kind of what we're talking about here, right? They want to know more about you, not necessarily the polished corporate type stuff, but really like Give me the deep, you know, give me the deep dive of who you are and, and why you're so passionate. Um, and that is really great content to include. They are three times more likely than non-Snapchatters to use AR to try out products. Um, this is kind of a shift, right? I mean, this is a significant amount of people interested in using AR to try out products. I've got some great examples coming up next where you can see uh, how companies are using it. But at the very basic level, if you're not familiar with Snapchat, the easiest way to think about AR is the filters. So you can do a geofenced filter. So if they're in your store, they can swipe in the filter and say, you know, they're at such and such boutique downtown and it'll pull up a little location filter. You can also use filters for events. So again, you can have a geofence around that and it'll give you that option to use that filter within a certain geographic area around that event. Um, there are some company examples of using like way more advanced AR. It really is just a matter of filters. I don't know what the cost of those kind of things are for businesses, but it really comes down to using filters in a lot of these cases, which Snapchatters are super familiar with um, and do find it easy to use. So one in two users says they're less likely to buy from a brand that chooses to promote the opposite side on which they stand on social issues. This is a very important stat to pay attention to. You notice this is 50%. 50% of Snapchatters care about what you think about social issues. It's a huge shift from other generations. And it's also a big risk point, right? Because if you do say your social issues, you risk alienating, you know, whatever percent of the people are on the other side of the social issue, right? A lot of things in America right now are split 50-50. So you risk alienating 50% of your potential customer base. Um, but at the same point, you have a chance to build a much stronger relationship with the Gen Zers that do care about your brand. Um, so I would say tread on this one lightly, you know, and really pay attention to the risks that you're taking if you do uh, choose to take a stance on social issues. But there has been a lot more pressure uh, local or lately to really talk more about those social issues. And businesses a lot of times are pressured into taking a stance um, these days, which is a really interesting shift 
uh, between, you know, just general consumers and these big, huge conglomerates is usually what you're seeing this far. So really important to pay attention to. I wouldn't say necessarily take action immediately. You do want to weigh this one carefully, but um, very important to notice that 50% of users are taking note, right? They do care. Three out of four users view themselves as inclusive. Again, this is the most ethnically and racially diverse generation, right? And they want to see themselves in the marketing. They want to see LGBTQ. They want to see interracial couples. They want to see ads with no white people in them, right? I mean, these are things that people really uh, pay attention to these days and businesses have gotten into trouble before for not being as inclusive with the example that I gave before was a great, a great one to think about. So this is very important for them. And you'll see that reflected in comments on social media and activity um, that it is really important. They expect a two-way communication with brands they love. So, you know, if you're on Snapchat, they expect you to be responding. <laughs> they expect you to be active. They expect you to be using that platform just like they are. They do use this platform to seek out levity and want to find fun. Um, Snapchat, as well as TikTok, you'll see in a little bit, that is for the same, this, this thing came up for both, right? People want to use these social medias as an escape. They want to get away from it all and use things like social media to get away um, and take them to a different place. You know, give me some fun, give me some good news, uh, make me laugh, right? So Snapchat is, you know, one of the, one of the more difficult things about Snapchat that is not the case with the other platforms is there isn't this public communication, right? So you can't just like see a Snapchat and all the comments that people have sent back in private messages. It doesn't work that way. And everything on Snapchat disappears in 24 hours. So it is a lot different functionality wise from the other networks, which is why it makes it one of the more difficult ones to be successful with as a small business. I'm not necessarily saying you should get on Snapchat immediately as a small business. I'm just saying, that this generation is there, right? And they have a lot of spending power. So if you can figure out how to use Snapchat and part of your marketing plan, there could be some great opportunities. I do have one more slide from that report that I had mentioned, and you can find the whole report online. Uh, like I said, you can just Google Snapchat report and you'll be able to find it. But what's really interesting about this slide is you can tell it's very focused on Gen Zers. They agree that they like to have clothes and accessories that have brand logos on them. Remember, millennials have not been very brand logo or brand uh, loyal. So really thinking about that shift is important. Uh, it matters now and it didn't matter as much before. They say wearing brand logos helps me show my personal identity. So again, that's taking into account the inclusivity, uh, the social issues. A lot of that comes into that personal identity. They say it's important to have uh, more brand item, name items. So they want those brand name items that traditionally other generations haven't cared as much about. They say that wearing brand logos means that they agree with what the brand stands for. This is crazy. This is a big shift, right? That's again, talking about those social issues, those the brands that stand for. And they prefer distinct and recognizable items. So t-shirts with logos on it, custom items. Um, this is that generation that's seeking those out. And I did have a question about these points in my previous presentations. Uh, it relates to the report. So if you pull up the full report, you can see what those points mean. So when we think about uh, successful campaigns, what I wanna do here is exit out of my PowerPoint and I'm gonna pop this up into the browser. Um, and just kind of skim through this and look at some of these opportunities. So this was right from Snapchat. Uh, they had some really great campaigns that they focused on. So I'm just going to highlight a, a couple, but you could find this report if you wanted to see the whole thing. So I like this example is AR, right? We're using Gucci uh, is using filters to try on their shoes. So at the very base, this technology is just filters, right? It's the same thing when you pull up a funny cat face to go over your face on a regular Snapchat filter. This is just using your shoes as the focus, right? So some really, really cool way to try on product. You'll see this as well with like flooring companies. Uh, you, you can put up your camera, hold it up to your living room and like swipe the different floors that'll fit on your floor. So uh, Snapchatters are much more likely to use this technology and they want to, they want to try on those products before they buy them. You'll see the same thing here with makeup. Uh, you can see her lip color changing. Again, just a filter. It's not really that hard to implement. They do have an example of a much more complicated Snapchat uh, opportunity with games and, and some interactivity. 
Um, that would, that's on a level I haven't explored for businesses, but they do have that technology in place. A couple different things to highlight here. We're talking about these gener these generation this generation, and they care about these social issues, right? So, um, this was a Snapchat filter that this campaign used. They also had, you know, masks. Again, this is all filters. This is all filter based. So, really figuring out how to use this for your company. Uh, they also had your Bitmojis and they had some custom sh custom shirts. Again, I'm not sure in the pricing on this stuff, but some really cool ways to use the technology that Snapchat has already built in. I'm going to give just one more example. Here was the Diwali festival uh, was canceled in India last year. So they use Snapchat to allow users to experience that, uh, that camp, that uh, event. So just some really unique ways to use Snapchat. Again, this is a little bit more complicated than a filter. This is more of an interactive um, uh, game type thing, but some really, really cool tech that exists in these companies' uh, algorithms already. So just a few examples there of some Snapchat campaigns. Like I said, it's probably the hardest one to implement as a, as a business. So you know, I really think we should focus most of our time today talking about TikTok and Instagram. So next we're going to flip to TikTok. I know TikTok is one of the, the newer platforms. It has been around for several years, but really during the pandemic, it picked up a lot of, a lot of activity. And just as a basic knowledge for those of you that aren't familiar with TikTok, there's basically two feeds. Um, as well as a discover tab. So the two feeds that you see when you pull up your TikTok are things that are suggested that you might like, as well as your following column. So you follow businesses, you follow people just like you would on a lot of other uh, platforms. The order that things show up in your timeline is based on algorithm. It's not time sensitive. Um, so, you know, beating the algorithm, understanding the algorithm, that's how <clears throat> you can get very successful in TikTok. <clears throat> So the very base of it, it's, it's videos. Um, they are, they were originally just one minute. They did just expand that to three minute videos. Um, so you can put a decent amount of content on this platform now. The key about the content for TikTok is it must appear unfiltered and organic. Users value personality, originality, uh, innovation, and fun. <clears throat> Again, they're using this platform as an escape. They want that levity. You'll also see TikTokers use brand ambassadors or influencers. You might have heard that term before, and that has proven effective for large brands. So, you know, the micro influencers also play into that. So those are kind of peer to peer creators. So those would be people that have gotten successful on TikTok in Gen Z, for example, the companies will contact them and say, hey, you've gotten really successful. I want you to market my product for me. They'll send them typically a free product and they'll make a video, tag them in it, um, you know, label it as sponsored content and send it out to all their followers. There are some TikTokers with you know, 10 million, 20 million followers that can be extremely influential. Um, there's one, one, one woman that I follow that has over 20 million TikTok followers and she's sponsored by a shoe company. And every once in a while, I would say it's only... I don't know, every other week, maybe she'll put up a video about these shoes that she's sponsored by. And they still get just as much content, uh, you know, as much uh, uh, interaction as the other TikToks that she puts up because she still has her own personality, her own flair. They're like her other videos. She just pitches the shoes within her comedy of the other TikToks. So those micro influencers can be it can be really helpful when we talk about TikTok. Um, however, you can go viral regardless of how many followers you have because of the way the algorithm works. So if you're paying attention to the trends and the hashtags and the songs and, you know, some of the things that you can use within TikTok, you can become very successful without actually having a lot of followers. Um, there's a girl that I follow that got very popular on TikTok because she posted these really funny sleepwalking videos. Well, she herself is a small business owner. She is a, an author. She writes uh, mystery novels and she also uh, has an eye, eyeshadow company and she will post about her eyeshadow in these other posts. And she'll say, Hey, got shipment of X and X palette. And then she'll post maybe 45 minutes later. Awesome work. You guys, we sold out. She did not get on TikTok to promote her product. Like she got on as a 
person. So, you know, her small businesses have become much more successful because she did join TikTok as a person. She's very funny. Um, and she does great content, which is really fun to pay attention to. I think she's got about 10 million followers. So it has in turn made her business very successful. So if you can figure out that algorithm and figure out how to get these popular videos, a lot of times you can get a lot of content, uh, you know, pushed out just from being successful at understanding the algorithms. Um, a lot of times we had to pay attention to how quickly can we capture the attention, right? We've got that eight second window that I mentioned before. So really paying attention to um, how quickly are you getting to the point, right? You only have a minute or in some cases, three minutes. I would say not a lot of people are using those three minute videos yet. A lot of them are still a minute. So how quickly can you capture that, ener that energy? Now, a lot of you might be thinking, okay, TikTok, this seems kind of big, right? Like, I'm not really sure how to get into this. There are some really great small businesses that I follow. Um, one is a home improvement uh, or home inspector person, and one is a uh, septic person, septic tank guy. And I follow them because they've got really great content. It's everything from like home tips, right? If you're inspecting your home, you know, pay attention to where these gas lines is, are, for example. Um, but they're also funny, you know, they got other content in there and they do a really great job capturing, you know, attention. When you think about watching these TikToks, they do a fantastic job. Now, am I personally going to do business with them? No, because they're not in my area, but I do contribute, you know, to their algorithm and like their videos and comment on things. And you can see that interaction really does help. And I would assume locally they do quite well because of their TikTok famousness. <laughs> so there are a lot of small businesses on TikTok that have become very successful. Um, a lot of big businesses, obviously, as well, which you'll see in the examples that I'm going to show. Um, but, you know, TikTok is a, a tricky beast because you can get very successful without having the traditional need for followers, for example. So some really neat opportunities for businesses uh, or people to get on TikTok. Again, I'm going to exit out of my PowerPoint here. I'm going to pop into my browser and we're going to look at the uh, TikTok campaigns. And again, you can see these links up top if you wanted to check out the full, uh, the full experience, right? If you wanted to look at more. So when we think about uh, TikTok, you know, who can do it? Anybody can do it. <laughs> that's really, that's the point, right? We, we can figure out um, how do we get on these platforms, follow the trends, understand the hashtag, learn how the platform works. Like use the platform on your own, obviously, before you try to be successful as a business. Um, so NBA huge organization. We all know who the MBA is. You know, this is an example of content that they have. Uh, this was National Cake Day, and they put up this video con compilation of a, them shoving cakes into a bunch of people's faces. So very, very simple content at the base of it all. Um, but, you know, great opportunity for them to jump on trends. National Cake Day could be a trend. Um, and as an organization, they fall into this, this uh, algorithm for that to pop up. Scroll down, Converse, uh, this is a great example of an influencer. So you'll notice uh, this is not Converse's account. This is somebody's Surface LDN. Uh, this is a guy that's got 7.1 million followers. So he does really well. Converse uh, contacted him. You can see it's sponsored. It's hashtag ad uh, to do this, this trend. So this trend is spray painting water and then you dip things in it and it dyes it. So they gave him some shoes and had him do this trend with the spray paint. Uh, he is not a Converse employee. He is not Converse as a company. This is using influencers to get your content out there. Um, and as a side note, those shoes are really cool and I want them. <laughs> so uh, this has been really, really successful for them. They actually launched a new uh, hashtag for it. And so far the hashtag generated 54 million views. So they basically asked, uh, user generated content, right? We talk about USG several times. Um, when we talk about social media, user generated content is a really successful way to get a lot of things out on your social media without you having to do the work. 
the last one I'm going to look at is this Chipotle campaign. So they, again, did a user-generated content, uh, UG, or UGC content campaign about this guac dance. So this coincided with National Avocado Day. It drove a quarter of a million video submissions and nearly 430 million video starts during its six-day run on TikTok. These numbers are incredible. And what's really incredible is Chipotle didn't do this, right? They had users submit their information and they shared their videos. So really, really powerful ways to use some of that user-generated content. And businesses can do this, right? Small businesses can do this. This is a, a great opportunity for businesses to explore if they can get into TikTok um, through user-generated content. You know, it's a lot less work than having to make the content yourself and it can be very successful. So you can kind of look at, if you wanted to look at them, you could, you know, click on the hashtag and you'd be able to see all the videos that are on there. But, you know, they, uh, they do a nice job using that user-generated content. Um, and with any of these campaigns, if you just search, uh, you know, Instagram successful Gen Z campaign or successful marketing campaign, you'll be able to see a lot of these op options. Uh, you know, so you could get an idea of how you as a business could use these platforms. So as I said in the beginning, you know, these three platforms that we talk about, Instagram is probably going to be the easiest to implement. So, you know, it's one of the more straightforward ones. And a lot of people are a little bit more familiar with it because Instagram is owned by Facebook. So they're kind of connected on the back end to some extent, uh, makes it a little bit easier for people to manage that currently have a Facebook page and Instagram is kind of like an addition, easy to add. So when you think about Gen Zers, Gen Z is checking this platform 11 times a day. This is Gen Zers, Facebook, you know, Facebook to millennials. Uh, millennials check Facebook that often. Instagram are checking, Gen Z are checking Instagram that often. So really important to pay attention to Instagram and your strategy. Um, if you're not familiar with Instagram, there are basically three ways to share content on Instagram. One would be just through the general newsfeed posting. Um, they'll show up again, based on algorithm, not time. Uh, so those will kind of get shifted around on the, on the news, the news feed. That's your regular content. You also have your stories. So Instagram stories pop up at the top of your Instagram. When you log into the platform on your phone, Instagram stories are only visible for 24 hours. You'll see stories also in play on Facebook and, uh, Snapchat. So stories come and go. They don't stay. There's no way to like search old stories. That content does disappear. There are also now reels on Instagram, which is basically TikTok on Instagram. Um, not super familiar with using reels, but it's very, very similar to how TikTok functions uh, and, you know, the search capability, the way that things get shared, uh, also algorithm based. So there are basically three different ways to share content on Instagram. So when you think about how often should you be on it, Instagram is going to be one of those that you need to post more often because people are checking it so much. So if they're refreshing it 11 times a day, if you've got new fresh content, that can be a great way to land on the top of their newsfeed. So really paying attention to those three methods and how you might use all three of those when you're thinking about how often to post and where to post within the platform. You want to focus on developing realistic and lifelike content. Uh, Instagram really got its start. We all remember the Instagram days of taking pictures of your food. Um, that's how Instagram really got its got its wheels, right? So it's grown a lot since then. Uh, people and businesses are using it in much different ways, but that realistic and lifelike content does really still play a very strong role. You want to also build a an Instagram story strategy. So again, those 24 hour posts, it is important because those stories pop up before the other content. So you should have a content strategy for your regular posts, but don't forget about the stories. The hard thing about stories is you can't post them in advance. You can't schedule them in advance like you can with the regular newsfeed, but they are cool opportunities to, you know, post from an event or do a little story about a new product that you got into your store. They can be very quick there's great tools editing wise within the platform to make it very easy to get some really sharp Instagram content. Think about developing a tech or humanitarian based brand initiative. Some great examples of this would be Tom Shoes, Bomba Socks, Buy One and Donate One, right? That's kind of their thing. They've got great Instagram strategies behind that, right? So those kind of things play very well on Instagram. 
And again, this user-generated content, this UGC that we just talked about with TikTok can be very powerful for Instagram as well. And you'll see that in some of the examples, a lot of these companies don't even post their own content, right? They're using these user-generated uh, content, user, user generate, user sent content uh, to be very successful on these platforms. I'm gonna exit out of my browser here. We'll get these pulled up. This is our last example uh, that we'll be diving into. And there are a lot of them on this one. I'm not gonna go over too many of them because they're kind of long uh, and a little bit more detailed, but I do wanna highlight just a few. So if you're familiar with the company Warby Parker, they do glasses, online glasses, and they send you a, a box and you get to choose what you wanna keep and what you send back. Um, really cool company if you haven't checked them out, but they have a very neat Instagram campaign that they did recently that was these cute little animals with their uh, glasses on them. So does this have anything to do with Warby Parker's services? Not really, <laughs> you know, I mean, uh, really, you know, just showing cute pictures of animals with their glasses on them. It doesn't really have anything to do with how the service works or how you use the website or, you know, what type of glasses they have. It's really just a, an attention grabber. So very, very cute campaign and, you know, it was fairly successful for them. And then they also put in people things, you know, down the road, they put in people things. They did average 50 comments per post, which is a lot. Uh, when you think of Instagram activity, those comments are very valuable in terms of the algorithm. So the more you can have, the better. I'm going to scroll, scroll down to the next one is GoPro. So we have mentioned user-generated content several times. GoPro is an absolute pro at doing this. Well, they currently have 17 million followers, and most of their marketing has been centered around user-generated content. They don't do a lot of their own content because people are taking these GoPros out and doing some really epic stuff that they want to share. So this is somebody... I don't know how they even managed to do it, take a picture of them using the GoPro to, to capture this surfer. Um, really, really cool photography. They didn't do anything. So absolutely genius in terms of marketing strategy. You know, how can you be work? How can you work uh, hard, smarter and not harder? This is a great example of working smarter. So they use this user-generated content in a series of, you know, really paying attention to the good descriptions, using hashtags, uh, tagging people, all these can't, these strategies that work really, really well on Instagram, they do a great job. You see this post has almost, almost a quarter of a million likes and they didn't make it. It's just fascinating to me. I think that they've really nailed it with user-generated content. So a great one to look at if you're looking for more examples for user-generated content. And then there's just one more I want to show is Ben and Jerry's. We all know Ben and Jerry's, a, a marketing genius when it comes to ice cream. They've done a really great uh, job with marketing throughout the years, but they really do use um, humor. Like that's the main thing in their campaigns is humor. And they continue that on their Instagram in addition to the other networks that they're on. Uh, so, you know, they've got this awesome gooey looking ice cream and the comments is just that flow though. So they do a really great job uh, creating some really, uh, you know, great content that gets out very quickly and very far without a lot of work. You know, it's not that much work to set up some really neat food photography pictures. Um, you, there's professionals that do it too. If you don't want to do it yourself, that's something that's easy to do. And they uh, do a really great job um, getting that out there. Sorry, I do want to share one more uh, just because I mentioned it earlier is Aerie. So uh, they're owned by American Eagle Outfitters, if you're not familiar. So Airy mostly shall, sh shares, you know, bras and underwear and swimsuits and those kind of things. And they were kind of the first brand to really use this inclusive body types, um, inclusive races and ethnic backgrounds. Um, they do a great job using this generation's focus on inclusivity and, you know, really understanding that we're not all models, right? <laughs> they do a really great job posting real photographs of the brand's uh, information. Again, this was user-generated content. So again, we're using this campaign that can be very successful on Instagram in particular. If you can figure out a user-generated content strategy, that can be a great uh, opportunity.
So overall, me as a business watching this YouTube, right? How can I understand how to use these strategies to target this Gen Z, right? You determine that Gen Z is part of your target market. You want to focus on a campaign that gets right, that gets right to them. These are kind of the basic five things to keep in mind. Um, first would be establishing clear values and mission. Again, they're inclined to vote their, with, their do, with their dollars and believe brand values to be a reflection of their own values and mission. So that inclusivity, that social issues component, that kind of plays into this first one, right? They need you to be solid on who you are as a company and why you're that way. So uh, definitely important to pay attention to when you're putting together your content of, of how you're showing that as a company. Kind of go to go along with that being transparent and accountable. Uh, brand trust is only second to price in terms of determining what brands this generation is going to support. I always like to say that brand is uh, gained in raindrops, but lost in buckets, right? So really, really important to pay attention to trust um, when we think about the trust value uh, that people are building with your company, that transparency and accountability is very important to them. Establish your brand's personality. No more sleek and minimal imagery. Think bold, strong voice personality. You can sit down and watch TV. You can watch YouTube with ads. You can scroll through your Facebook news feed and you can see this show. Brands are taking a lot more risks to be more bold and out there. And you'll see that reflected in a lot of marketing these days. Um, a great example to look at is some of the Super Bowl advertising from this year. There was a lot of this type of energy that was uh, dipped into these marketing strategies for these companies. So really pay attention to that personality piece. Be entertaining. Again, that eight second, eight seconds is such a smart amount of time when we really think about it. So you have eight seconds to tell them how to pay attention or they're going to move on. Um, very short attention span. And again, we're thinking about, you know, traditional marketing is not necessarily going to work with this generation. So really thinking about how do we capture their attention very quickly. Um, and then lastly, building a community. Unfortunately, Gen Z is the loneliest generation in America, and they are desperately looking for ways to engage. So a great way to do that, you can use TikTok and Instagram to regularly uh, communicate with your followers. And you'll see that a lot of influencers, a lot of brands are commenting back on most of the comments that come through their social media platforms and really are engaging with the people that are interacting with them, you know, really returning that, uh, that interaction, that relationship. So thinking about how to build a community is important to consider in your campaign as well. Uh, you know, how do you keep that engagement up and kind of overall, you know, if you're going to be on any of these platforms, be on them yourself first, understand how they work, you know, what people are looking for, what people are posting, how they're using this platform. And that's going to ultimately make you more successful when you try to do these things as well. So do keep your, your strategy focused, right? Just because you watch this presentation today doesn't mean that you need to just go out there and start a Snapchat, a TikTok and an Instagram for your business. You really do need to think about strategy long-term time commitment, um, the ability to understand each network individually and what you can really handle, right? There's only so many hours in a day. So do keep that in mind as well. So if you do have follow-up questions, you can locate the uh, SBDC office nearest you by visiting the website, americasbdc.org, and you can find uh, the way to contact your local center from there. Uh, I thank you so much for watching today. Really appreciate your time. Um, and if you do want a copy of this presentation, you can drop a comment in the YouTube down below and we can send you a copy of it if you would like some of these links. Um, so thanks everybody for joining me today and we'll see you again next time.